This here is a E flat bass. We call them basses in the brass band. Um, outside of a brass band, they're called tubers, uh, and it's in the key of E flat. Now I'm, I've done a uh, a video on the E flat bass before. Um, but this one is going to be a specifically a review of this bass. This bass is made by a company called John Packer Musical Instruments. Uh, their logo is here. The model of this one is 277SMK11, which is a good model number. It very clearly describes the qualities of this instrument. Um, if you saw the model number 277SMK11 written on paper, you would know instantly that it is an E flat bass. Anyway, I'm going to talk about a couple of foibles of this uh, instrument because there are a couple of weird, interesting things that I know. Firstly, the bead around the outside of the bell is, it feels abnormally thick. I don't think that has any consequence, it just feels a bit weird. Uh, secondly, at the bottom of the instrument there is this uh, belt loop. That digs into your belly when you hold it. It is really, really annoying. It would have made much more sense to have something a little bit less uh, prominent, and there could possibly have been a better place to put it. Uh, so that loop there is uh, in addition to this loop here, which doesn't poke into you when you play, but they don't feel or look very solid. They may very well be very strong and solid, they just don't look it. Um, and the only other annoying part of this instrument is that this lead pipe goes straight out of the valve casing and goes through to the mouthpiece. Most basses would have it so that it goes up and out slightly, but with this bass it goes straight out. Um, and the result of that is that you need to hoist it up when you play it. If you're an E-flat bass player and you rest the instrument on your lap as is normal, it doesn't line up. You either have to slouch, you either have to hold your instrument higher up on your legs, um, and it, it's just not the usual way that you would hold one of these instruments. Now unfortunately that's not something that can be modified because you might think I'd take the lead pipe off and just put one up that goes that goes at the right angle. Um, but if you do that you have to make this longer, if you make this longer you make the instrument flat. Um, and so that's just simply not going to work unless you were to butcher another part of the instrument to take off. Uh, some tuning to compensate for that. So it's an idiosyncrasy with this particular instrument, not something I particularly like. Um, but other than that, I, I actually reasonably enjoyed playing this. I find it a, a nice instrument. Um, as with some of the tuba th uh, tubas that I have played, there are some iffy tuning issues, um, but tubas in, in this grade uh, only really playing uh, relatively simple stuff. If you were to play a difficult solo on it, you know, you're going to have some limitations uh, with a, an intermediate or a beginner grade tuba. Anyway, I'm going to play a little bit of uh, the variations on Napoli. I'm not a tuba player. Um, in fact, I'm a conductor at the moment, so um, you'll have to forgive me for playing this a little bit slow. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So anyway, that's about it. That's about enough of what I'll play. Um, now, on a completely different subject, I was talking to uh, with my father last night, and he mentions that uh, a very old friend of mine uh, down in Omru by the name of Ross Bradford uh, has stumbled upon my videos and, and asked uh, my dad to pass on his greetings. So if you're watching this one, Ross, I hope you're well. Um, it's been a long time since I, I've, I've seen you last, so uh, yeah, hope you're doing well. Anyway, this uh, concludes this video and review on the JP, the John Packer uh, base. You'll be able to very easily remember it by its uh, model number if you do come to want one, uh, 277SMK11, which is really the short code for E-flat base in the industry. Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching.